Now that governments across the world are ever more seriously exploring central bank digital currencies and seem to make efforts to launch them in their own countries, the questions you may have could be, what are these so-called CBDCs and does it affect my Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency investments? Hopefully after this episode you are able to answer these questions for yourself, so just sit back, relax and keep on watching. Welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners, I'm your host Adrian and I'm going to take a deeper dive into central bank digital currencies and their implications. As always we will cover this content with no frills nor fluff. Keep in mind we are not investment advisors and our content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Nothing in this video should be construed as investment nor financial advice. Central bank digital currency is also known as digital fiat currency. It is a government issued digital currency that serves as a representative of a country's official fiat currency, is therefore legal tender and might at some point even replace physical cash altogether. The concept of CBDCs is a broad one as it involves money that can be accessed on a larger scale than reserves, be a backup transactional system in case of private banking systemic failure, be able to yield higher interest rates than reserves but also be used to levy negative interest rates to account holders, and have additional use cases for retail transactions more than fiat money, such as transaction ability influenced by social credit score or governments deciding what you can or cannot buy with your money based on what they consider desirable. CBDCs can in some circumstances also be backed by a suitable amount of monetary reserves like gold or fiat currency reserves. Before we continue this episode, if you like our content, please give this video a like and additionally subscribe to our channel for more of our updates. CBDCs will function as a secure and easy digital equivalent of a country's fiat currency. It will possess the same functionalities as paper money since it can be used as a mode of payment, as a store of value and as an official unit of account. In a sense over 90% of the current money supply is already digital currency. The difference is that currently a lot of that is created by and deposited with commercial banks of which they keep the records and they process the payments as well. A new CBDC will be created by the central bank and deposited in your digital wallet directly connected to the central bank ledger. Just like banknotes, CBDCs can possess a unique serial number that will help to distinguish one unit of the currency from another to prevent counterfeiting. CBDCs are a part of the money supply that is issued and controlled by the central bank so it will work alongside other forms of central bank issued money such as coins, bills, notes and bonds. So far, no country has officially issued a CBDC, but about 70% of central banks in the world are researching the possibility of issuing one. Some countries that are leading the development include China. China is the leading country in the plans for issuing a CBDC. The People's Bank of China, the country's central bank, has stated that its CBDC is almost ready at the time of recording this video. It has made plans for the official launch and is planning to target major domestic payment firms such as Tencent and Alibaba. Thailand is currently in the test phase of issuing a CBDC and Brazil's central bank is anticipating that it will be ready before 2023. Japan's central bank has started looking into the possibilities of creating a digital version of the yen and also in the US serious research into the possibilities is being done by the Federal Reserve. Besides that, the director of the International Monetary Fund has also stated that a new Bretton Woods agreement would need to be arranged in the light of the economic crisis that is caused by government measures in response to the World Health Organization having declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. Which technologies are they using for their systems? Although most central banks are not in support of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, they will at least to a certain extent be using the technology on which the cryptocurrency is built to develop their own CBDCs. Though distributed ledger technology will probably be implemented in one shape or another, it will be unlikely to resemble in any way like a true permissionless, open, borderless, censorship resistant public blockchain like Bitcoin or the other cryptocurrencies that we are familiar with. Of course, they will be fully centrally controlled database structures because that is what central banks prefer the most. So what are some of the pros and cons of central bank digital currencies? CBDCs will inherently ensure the adherence of users to strict regulatory laws including the anti-money laundering and countering financing of terrorism acts. Since the central banks control the CBDCs, it makes it easier for them to monitor every transaction conducted with the digital currencies to prevent fraud, money laundering and funding illegal activities. 
if a CBDC is designed to facilitate anonymous electronic transactions, it will provide its users with a measure of privacy and eliminate the concerns that are most often associated with making online transactions. In a sense, for third parties, such as private companies, your privacy could be better protected, but towards the government, obviously, totally not. And this could be problematic, especially if you are involved in political activism or if you operate a business that the government doesn't like. Physical cash and non-governmental public blockchains like Bitcoin are actually essential for the inclusion of these people in economic trade. CBDCs are very easy to use since they are in a digital format. Anyone can make use of them in day-to-day -day transactions in the same manner as fiat currency. They are readily available to everyone who has a smartphone, even those in rural areas where there are no physical banks or ATM galleries, thus potentially improving financial inclusion. At least that's what is portrayed it would achieve. Voices in the Bitcoin space, however, like Andreas Antonopoulos, aren't so sure of that happening in reality with CBDCs, because one of the main reasons for financial exclusion of many of the poor is that they don't have identification, which would also make it hard for them to pass KYC, for example which would undoubtedly be required for participating in CBDCs. On the other hand, efficiency would increase because the current system involves daily settlement, while CBDCs would allow for instant settlement, and then the transition towards a less cash or cashless society. The concept of CBDCs was built on creating a society that will not depend wholly on central bank issued coins and notes. Creating a CBDC should contribute to increase the number of digital transactions without completely eliminating the need for cash. Since the government cannot regulate cryptocurrencies that are poised to radically influence the current payment system, in an ideal world CBDCs aim to combine the best of two worlds, regulation and a more efficient digital payment system that can compete with cryptocurrencies. But we have to keep in mind that the world isn't that much ideal. Cybersecurity is one of the biggest threats to CBDCs. Digital currencies are often faced with the challenge of security against cyber theft. Hackers often look for slight loopholes in the security of the network in a bid to steal large sums of money. There is also the possibility of creating new means of fraud and money laundering using CBDCs, which could form serious threats to the economy. Another point of concern is centralization. CBDCs are regulated by the central bank, so they have a high level of control over the transactions conducting using digital currencies. They have the right to implement monetary policy and they will certainly do that. At one hand, their monetary policy controls will aim to prevent value swings. However, the power wielded by the central banks can be detrimental to users when CBDCs are used, and they will be, to implement difficult monetary policies such as high or negative interest rates during an economic crisis, thus making it expensive for citizens to use the CBDC. But, for example, in a cashless society, you don't really have the option to opt out when the CBDC is the only available payment method and cash would have been eliminated. The government would also have the power to deduct taxes directly or to prohibit citizens to make certain purchases or whatever the government deems undesirable. The best alternative to opt out in such an environment would naturally be public, open, neutral, borderless, censorship-resistant, immutable cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. So what does it all mean for Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the most popular cryptocurrency in the world. It has radically changed the payment systems available to people, partly due to the competition it meant for traditional finance, and is one of the main reasons why central banks are pushing to create their own digital currencies. The development of CBDCs by several central banks around the globe can have two possible impacts on Bitcoin. They can become a threat to Bitcoin since they would have the backing of federal governments and central banks and perhaps provide more convenience than Bitcoin because it is centralized which makes it more efficient. Also keep in mind that because the government has full authority but also controls legislation, it can make laws to discourage the use of Bitcoin. This could lead to less usability and acceptance, which could act as a ceiling on the Bitcoin price. The second possible impact could be that Bitcoin may also serve as the opt-out of CBDC for a lot of people to be able to do economic trade freely wherever it is restricted by government rules. For example, in case of social credit or for example the potential vaccination passports that are to be connected to them. Bitcoin may also be used to avoid negative interest rates or to use it as a hedge against inflationary monetary policy of central banks. So if governments don't succeed in restricting the use of and access to Bitcoin, the demand for Bitcoin might even increase because of mentioned reasons. At least some publicly traded companies see the same writing on the wall that there is a real threat to the current fiat currency system 
as some have already decided to turn some of their cash assets into Bitcoin and the more companies are going to do that, the higher the buy pressure for Bitcoin becomes. You can learn more about that in one of my recent videos that is called Why Corporations Are Gobbling Up Bitcoin and that video will be featured at the end of this one. Although no country has fully issued a CBDC mainly because of technological constraints and some other policy issues, the advancements in technology will further accelerate the development of these digital currencies and no doubt we will see many of them in different forms emerging quite soon. CBDCs for investors have no additional direct benefits as they aim to be stable currencies. For Bitcoin investors there could be indirect benefits coming from people that can't or don't want to participate in a CBDC controlled economy. A lot of power will be concentrated in the hands of central banks and if there is anything that Bitcoiners traditionally distrust more than commercial banks, then it is central banks. I personally believe CBDCs would give central banks and governments too much power and control over our money and I don't think we should be wanting that as free citizens. This is why I would much rather prefer to use and keep Bitcoin instead if that time arrives and I'm personally confident Bitcoin will take a prominent role as a monetary asset, if not because of CBDCs, then at least despite of CBDCs. Changes are gonna come and I hedge my bets at least partially with a small amount of Bitcoin just in case. That's about all, this is Adrian reporting to you from Bitcoin for Beginners virtual headquarters. Stay with us and watch one of our other videos next.